Ruchim Habayim, welcome friends. I'm back once again with another study in Rabbi Daniel Gladstein's book, The Concealed and the Revealed. And I just was reading through it and found another amazing gem that I thought I'd share. And so I decided to call this this study the connection with Purim and the the red heifer, the paraduma, and or the holy cow. And so I'm going to open it up and uh, begin like this. So first of all, the in the Megillah, Masechet Megillah, it actually says here that Vashti from the book of Esther had a tail. And it says here in the, the, the Gemara, the angel Gabriel came and made her grow a tail. What is this talking about? How can she have a tail? Well, let's see. First of all, uh, the Yaros Devash actually explains that this is not literal, but where are they getting this from? So it's interesting because in the book, the Sefer Bereshis, when Hashem made Adam, it says he caused a deep sleep upon the man and he slept and he took one of his sides. Okay, and the rabbis actually say, what, is it, what was this? What does it mean that Chava was built from Adam's side? Okay, Zanav, Zanav. And one opinion is that a man was created with a double figure, a male figure and a female figure joined back to back. And according to this opinion, the side was the female figure that was separated. You know, most associate this with the rib, but it literally is side. But there's another opinion, and that is that man had a tail, that Adam actually had a tail. According to this opinion, the tail was the side that was built up to become Chava. So... Let's go on here. Now, the Vashti is, let's say, just say she had a tail. What does this mean? So Vashti would actually, in the book of Esther, would uh, strip the Jewish women naked and make them violate the Shabbat. Therefore, Mita Kanegan Mita, she was ordered to appear before Ahasuerus, uh, and the dignitaries on the seventh uh, day uh, on the Shabbat. And he, she would order all the women, the Jewish women to, or all the women that uh, on Shabbat to be naked. And so this was really wrong. But this is Mita Kanegan Mita that um, the sages say that when Queen uh, Vashti grew a tail, it actually means that from just where it comes from Zanav in the beginning with Adam and Chava, Zanav is uh, connected to Zela, meaning that she was made in the image of Hashem. And so she had this modesty about her, this that the angel really didn't make her have a tail, but he actually put Snews uh, with... Of Vashti, where she was actually um, had a conscience about modesty, where just like Chava in the beginning, Adam and Chava did not know they were naked before they took part in uh, the fruit. And so she kind of came back to this moment. This is what it means that the angel Gabriel came and made her grow a tail. So when Achishverish ordered her to come out and dance for his guests and to be naked, she refused. She refused to do this. And so this is why the the rabbis say that she had a tail. Now, what's going on here? What does this all mean? Well, there's an interesting story in, in, in this book that... Uh, from the Pasita Rabasi, uh, Chazal, Chazal tell this story here, and 
it says there was a Jewish farmer who fell on hard times and sold his cow that he used to pull his plow. The animal was purchased by a non-Jew who immediately put the cow to work. The cow plowed his fields and throughout the week he, he did it all six days of the week. But on Shabbat, he rested. The cow would rest. The cow crouched down under the yoke and refused to move. It would not pull the new owner. So so this farmer was actually poor and he sold his cow to a, a goy. And the new owner whipped the cow in an effort to compel him to get up and work on Shabbat. But his efforts were to no avail. So the cow remained stationary. The farmer went to the Jew and, who had sold him the cow and he expressed his frustration. He, he was basically compa complaining. He says, I've been whipping this cow, trying to get it to work, but it will not work. I want a refund. And the former owner knew there was nothing wrong with the animal. The cow became accustomed to not working on Shabbos and didn't understand that it was the non-Jewish -Jew owner that for working for the non-Jewish owner, it was permitted. And so the Jewish farmer advised the new owner that he does not need to return the cow. So what he did was he approached the cow. The Jewish owner approached the cow, bent down to whisper in its ear and said to the cow, you now you know that as long as you're in my possession, you work six days a week and rest on Shabbat. However, I sold you to a new owner who is not Jewish. So please stand up and pull his plow. You were no longer required to rest on Shabbos. The cow immediately rose and began to plow, and the non-Jew was shocked. He had beaten the cow, yet despite all his efforts, the cow had refused to move. And now the Jew had simply whispered into the animal's ear, and it suddenly was ready to work. And so the, the non-Jew didn't understand it. He said, what did you whisper to the cow? The Jew reassured him it wasn't through witchcraft or sorcery. He just told him what needed to be related to the cow. And when the farmer heard that the cow had not wanted to work in observance of Shabbat, he was, uh, he was profoundly moved. This cow, which was unable to speak, had an intellect far inferior than that of a human being and was able to recognize its creator and observe the day of rest mandated by God. How could he, a human with vastly superior intelligence, with the ability to reason and think who was created in the image of God, not conduct himself according to the wishes of Hashem? How could he not realize that Hashem's commandments have to be followed when a simple cow was able to recognize it? The farmer was so deeply affected that he subsequently converted to Judaism. Now, this is amazing. What is it, What is going on about this cow and what has this got to do with everything here? So what's interesting is the Pasita continues providing another astounding revelation. Not only did Ahasuerus Neshama return to this world as a goy who converted to Judaism, but after Gerus, so he studied and mastered Torah. So what's going on here? The rabbis say, the Pasita says that Rabbi Yochanan ben Torsa he was the the owner of the cow and he converted to Judaism. But not only that, this was Ahasuerus' neshama returning as this non-Jew, uh, as this goy who bought this cow. And because he studied Torah, his statue, stature grew among his contemporaries and he eventually was able to achieve the level of Atana and he became known as our Yochanan ben Torsa, our, the Rav Yochanan, the son of the cow. And he was called this because his Gerus had been precipitated by the events of the surrounding cow that he had purchased. So this non-Joy Jew became a convert and a Tanaim. He was a, a Tana. He was a giant Torah scholar who actually was the Gilgul of Ahasuerus. And this is amazing. And not only that, so the rabbis say that Vashti never literally had a tail, but the Ramaf Mifanu reveals the identity of the cow 
and of the non-Jew who converted as a result of the animal's unwillingness to work on Shabbos and Achashverosh's evil queen Vashti who had enslaved the Jewish girls and forced them to violate Shabbos was reincarnated as a Gilgul in the form of a cow who would not work on Shabbos. So the rabbis actually say, yeah, she really did have a tail, the tail of a cow. And so this is amazing. This is a... Uh, very mystical, but it goes on a little bit more. And there's a connection between Purim and Parsha, Par, Para, the, the red heifer. And it says here, upon re further reflection regarding the story brought in the Pasita, we are impressed by one of the messages contained therein, even how even a cow can influence someone to come close to Hashem. The Pasita adds, that it should not be surprising that a cow could bring a person under the confe hashkina. That after all, that he would be under the wings of the shakina. After all, he was. It's read in the Torah. Zokhuchat Torah. This is the decree of the Torah. A single paraduma, a single red heifer, can provide purity and and uh, tahara to all Chal Israel. And it's quoting Ben Midbar. 19 verse 2 the pasita compares the role of the paraduma providing purity to Chal israel to the cow that was uh, that even uh helped the the conversion of a non-jew for a person to become a member of the jewish nation so not only did a cow convert the soul of a non-jew but it even provided atonement and purity to all of israel and so Combined with the revelation that of Remi, Rema Mifano, who was a great Mikubalim, that uh, the convert was none other than a Gilgul of Ahasuerus. And we can understand why the Parsha Para is read immediately after the Yom Tov of Purim. After all, the power of the Para Duma is the ability to render people to whore and is more fully appreciated in the context of the cow that cleansed and purified the solid soul of Ahasuerus. And Rav Moshe Wolfson points out that the gematria of the opening words of the Parsha Para, uh, Zot Chuchot, Zot Chuchat, the, this is the decree, 916. The gematria of Zot Chuchat is 916, which is identical to the gematria of Hamelech Ahasuerus. Amazing. We see that in Esther, at the end of the book of Esther, it says, Vayasem HaMelech Achashverosh Mas, King Achashverosh, levied taxes on the mainland of the, and the islands of the sea. So the taxes is, uh, taxes in Hebrew is Mas Mem Samik here. But you can flip them around and you get the Samik Mem, which equals a hundred. So even though Ahasuerus was brought, was under the influence or power of the Samic Mem, it was the Paraduma, the holy cow, that actually corrected his neshama, brought him to convert his soul and do tikkun. And same with the cow that Vashti became. This was in a way a rectification for the wrong that they did. And I just wanted to share that with everybody. And just an amazing story. I love this book. And if uh, you want to learn more about Purim, I recommend this book. Anyways, have a good week, rest of the week. And may you all have a good Shabbos. Shalom.